All right, everyone. So on our first day of class of our search engine optimization for business, we need to talk about a few things on a high level. Notice that my class is called Search Engine Optimization for Business. But you don't need to take this class and already have a business. You don't even need a website. You need these concepts that you will apply eventually. And usually I'm talking about things in terms of business, but everything that I'm going to talk about will be applicable to any online endeavor. Let's say I'm a realtor and I want to get more clients. I want to sell more houses. SEO could help me because that'll drive more traffic to my realty website. Let's say I'm a restaurant. I'm a steakhouse. I want more patrons to come to my steakhouse. Search engine optimization also helps because through the practices of on my website and the practices on social media, for example, I could drum up more business to come to the steakhouse. Let's say I'm a band. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a bassist in a, in a band. And we want more gigs. We want to play at more places. Therefore, we want to get known. We want to get found. Search engine optimization again. There's so much tied into the search engines nowadays Google being Yahoo, etc., etc. People search on the search engines. People still get the, the phone book. Most of us don't want it anymore. And so it's all about search engine optimization. What can we do to get found with search engines? But don't think about it literally just because my class is called For Business. It can apply to anything. What if I am a freelance web designer that want to get more clients? This still applies. What if I'm a painter and I just want to show my paintings to the world. I'm not trying to sell them, I just want to show my paintings to the world. Well, I want to get known on the search engines. That also applies. What if I'm a nonprofit organization that wants more members, more donations to the organization? Search engine optimization. I want to get known. I want to get found. So everything that I do could have search engine optimization attached because the search engines are so transparent nowadays, you don't even think about them. For example, if I were to go on my web browser, and even if I'm not literally on google.com, and I type up here at the top, dog walkers. I'm not technically on Google, but then I get Google results. The search engines are so integrated with the web browsers that you don't even think about it anymore. And so, we'll talk about how to rank because how many of you visit uh, well we've got here three million results how many of you would visit page three of the results normally raise your hands very few people how many of you would assume the best results are on page one raise your hand more people so the thing is that we're going to that's what we're going to focus on to try to get as close to the top the first page of results because you might not personally um, go to the third page you might not personally look at the first page but Google has 65 percent market share hundreds of millions of searches per hour pretty much so our goal is to be ranking as best as possible on the first page question yeah, I just had a question on um, local, Google local. Um, it, it, no matter where you're in the country, you'll get different results if you type in Google, right? Mm -hmm. How does that it just go by? The, um, there's a symbiotic relationship between the web browser and the search engine in that we don't really realize this, but every time we use a web browser, uh, go to websites, we're broadcasting a lot of information. Part of that information is our location. So the search engines look at that to try to give you a good result, local result. We'll go into more detail about that. Okay. But that's right, especially when you're looking for local businesses. How does it know that I'm in San Diego? Now this is a little bit more uh, maybe north of where I was looking for, but it's pretty close. So we'll see about that, uh, the importance of local considerations. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm concerned with reaching clients pretty much in the San Diego County. Mm -hmm. uh, does Google also have sixty percent of the market share for the San Diego County, or could it be that San Diegans, for one reason or another, prefer to use Yahoo or Bing over Google? 
That's a good question. I don't quite have an answer for that because I'm thinking in global terms, just the statistics that globally Google is the biggest one and then Bing. We can do research on that. That's a good question actually. We can do research to see, well, what's the most popular one per market, per uh, you know, county, per state. Um, so I'll have to look into that. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, one, one thing, even though I brought up Google here, what I want us to get used to is to not think about it in simply terms of Google. I want to get used to thinking in terms of search engines. I want to use the more generic term because Google is not the only search engine, even though that's the first one that I brought up. Um, we also have the other big one, Bing. So if I search Bing, dog walkers, I might get the same results, I might get different results, and we'll go into details. But I want to think about it in terms of search engines and search engine results pages, because uh, you might be using Google 100% of the time, and everyone you know might be using Google 100% of the time. But 20% of the of all search traffic globally is also Bing. And that's hundreds of millions of searches per day. So we want to just get used to search engines, not Google, not Bing. We want to be a little more generic. And uh, it's sort of like when we talk about um, tissue paper. Notice I said tissue paper and not Kleenex. Kleenex is an official brand name of tissue paper, facial tissue. But Kleenex has become so genericized that we think, okay, hand me a Kleenex, when technically, hand me a facial tissue. Or let's go throw something away in the dumpster. Technically, dumpster is a brand. It's actually a trash receptacle, let's say. So Google is not the be-all and end-all of search engines, even though it's so big. There's also Bing, there's also Yahoo, there's also AOL, Lycos, all of these that you probably never heard of, DuckDuckGo, but they have a lot of traffic. So we're going to think in terms of generically search engines, not specifically one search engine. And so, If we look at the calendar, we're going to talk about different things. If you might have educated yourself a little bit before in SEO, you might see things here that you might not have seen in other resources. That's because I tried to tie together SEO and SEM, search engine optimization and search engine marketing. It's a disservice not to think of both of them at the same time. They're so hand in hand nowadays. SEO, again, basically is what you do on your website, and SEM is what you do outside of your website. So you need to think of both. You might be accomplishing everything that you need to do of a checklist of on-page SEO, but then you don't touch anything about SEM, which would include like blogs, social media, mailing lists, all of this stuff we'll talk about, uh, landing pages, etc we might not think about that and that's why we're not ranking very well because we're not thinking about the SEM component and only focusing on the SEO component so we'll talk about both we'll talk about things like researching your competition and long tail keywords and plugins and such like that because it really is a more full full picture and again I do this for real clients I can show you clients that you search for something and they're on page one because of all of the different tactics all the different techniques that you have to take into consideration to rank well. Do you think it's possible for any of us beginners or some, you know, a beginner to do SEO and get to the top? Or is that just unreachable? No, it is. You, it, you, are, you do have, everyone has the ability to reach the top, but it can be more difficult depending on your, on your, on your category. If I'm yet another web design company, yet another um, realty company, yet another babysitting company, I might have so much competition that I'm going to have a hard time getting to the top for the various reasons that we'll talk about. So we might not be number one, but we might be on page one, we might be on page two, and we might be on different other, other services besides Google. We might be on Bing. That could bring us a lot of traffic. So it is attainable, but what I do want to say is that oftentimes um, Let's say you learn, let's say you're here for four weeks, you learn everything, and you see that it's hard, but then you want to hire a company, you'll be educated to know 
this is what they should be doing. I don't have time to do it, but this is what they should be doing. So you'll be educated when you hire an outside company, which is good. Then if you hire an outside company and they tell you, uh, okay, great, thank you for hiring us, you're going to rank in like two weeks, number one. That's a warning sign. If they tell you, you're going to rank in one month, that's a warning sign. If they're going to tell you, you're going to rank in three months, that's a warning sign. The warning sign is that they give you a timetable that they guarantee or that they tell you you're going to rank in X amount of time. That's a warning sign because this is, this is, this is an inact, inexact science to some degree. And so if some company tells you we're going to rank you in a certain amount of time, they're probably not doing it the most official, professional, long-term ways. They're probably using these techniques that will give you short bursts of positive results, and then they die down, they taper down, or they suddenly don't work anymore. So when a company hires me and they say, how long is it going to take for me to get number one? We tell them, we don't know. We need to start off a three-month contract at least, to start to talk about all of these issues and implement all of these plans and then we'll check in in three months to see how we're doing. Maybe within two weeks they're number one. Great. Maybe it's been two and a half months and they're still on page three. But they were on page 70 previously. So there's a timetable of as, as long, the more you do this stuff, the better in the long term. So, question to the class. How, uh, we, we can do SEO the easy way or the hard way? Raise your hand if you'd like to do uh, SEO the easy way. Okay, great. Take your hand now and reach into your wallet. <laughs> and let's take out your credit card. Because the easy way to rank on search engines is to pay. Notice I did a quick search dog walkers. Affordable dog walkers. Love your dog and your budget? Great. They're the number one result, so they must be the best result, right? For a large segment of people, yes. The first result is the best result. But wait a minute. If I look a little carefully here, this is an ad. Someone paid to be number one. So not necessarily the first result is the best result. And ads are marked as ads. Question. I don't know how much should that cost? I don't know. It depends on this particular, how competitive is the dog walking service in San Diego. But we will see a, a general idea of what the ranges of paying for is when we get to that a little later. Yes? Does Google go by... Do, do, the, do the search engines? Search engines. Well, yes. I was thinking particularly in Google, I Google exchange the sure. algorithms to obtain what you was recently, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the SEO? And I mean, that happened to me at a, a former company, and we just lost a lot of our standing when we changed their that's, that's the moving target, unfortunately. I've been teaching this class for several years now, and I've seen that moving target. I've seen that techniques that used to be very useful become less useful. I've seen techniques that used to be useful become very bad. So it does change. When these algorithms change, when the search engines decide to take different factors into account, people do get affected. But really, the secret behind all of this is going to be content. Not the tricks of this month, not the techniques of this quarter, but the content. So that's why we're going to have a discussion deeper about content and such. So really, if you've got good content and various other factors, that's what's going to help you more than just using the technique du jour. So I'm going to skip a few of these. These are marked as ads. Then I get number one. Find a dog walker, walking services. So this is a dog walking company itself that lets you find other dog walkers. It's not a specific company that is number one. It's sort of a directory. Make a note of that. This is becoming much more common. Directories of results, not specific results. Dogwalker.com is a directory. What's this one? Dog walker. It's number one and number two. San Diego dog walkers.com. Care.com. But then they have a subsection of dog walkers. So their main audience is not dog walkers. It's something care.com. But they offer dog walkers. How to become a professional, professional dog walker. That's a how to tutorial. It's not an actual company. 
that I can hide. Dog walkers on Yelp, another directory. This is the changing face of the search engine results page, the SERP. You're not going to see as many individual results. You're going to see more blog posts, how-to articles, directories. And so you're going to see then, it's going to be harder to find, to get found as an individual company. That's why we want to think about, am I on Yelp? You might not have thought about it. Dog walkers are on Yelp. Realtors are on Yelp. Lawyers are on Yelp. Maybe you didn't put yourself on Yelp, but probably someone else did. And that's SEM. What are you doing outside of your website to get ranked? I'll talk about that, of course. So bunches of ads on the bottom, on the top, on the side. These people have been paying lots of money to get to number one. And that, as I'm saying, that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the easy way. Take out your money and you pay. I don't know how much. It always ranges depending on the particular niche. But then, let's say you do pay. You become number one. Brings you a lot of traffic. Great. Then your competitor pays a little bit more. Now they're number one. Okay, so you pay a little bit more again. You're number one again. Then your competitor pays a little bit more. They're number one. Then a third company comes in. Now they're number one. So it's a never-ending race to be paying to be, get to number one. That's the easy way. It's the expensive way. We're going to talk about in this class the hard way. The hard way of setting a good foundation through a lot of different avenues to get organic results. Notice my syllabus says, what's the difference between organic SEO and PPC? PPC is pay per click. You're paying to get found. And every time someone clicks on one of these results, it costs them money. You're paying per click. And there's many different flavors of pay per click, many different Google ads and Bing ads, payment methods. But in short, one of the common ones is you choose some keywords, you choose a link, you pay for it, you put a pool of money, let's say, $50. And within that $50, every time someone sees your result and then clicks on it, you get deducted, let's say, 50 cents. So some uh, clicks cost you a dollar. So out of that $50, you only have 50 clicks. Maybe some of them are 50 cents, so you've got 100 clicks out of that $50. It really depends on the keywords and a bunch of factors. But that's PPC. That's paying for ranking the easy way. The hard way is organic SEO, which is we'll talk about keywords and the more modern long tail keywords. We'll talk about researching your competition, having a well-designed site, what are you doing on social media, all of that stuff. That's the more complex but longer term, better foundation um, form of SEO. So if you hire another company and they tell you, yeah, you're going to rank in a month, they may be taking part of the money that you're paying them to do the work and creating these pay-per-click campaigns and giving you that great result in a week, in two weeks. Then the money runs out and suddenly you're not at the top anymore and they tell you, oh, you need to pay a little bit more because Google changed their algorithm or whatever they tell you. So that's, that happens. You hire an SEO company and they give you great results early on, but they're doing PPC behind the scenes. When the, money, when the money runs out, your results could run out. So a more serious company is doing it the hard way, the long way, which is what we'll be talking about in this class. So let's do this activity. Let's, um, let's open a web browser. We've got all the popular ones right here. Open whatever web browser you like. And then let's browse to the site google.com. Let's go directly to google.com. Have you heard um, that, that, um, that Google got transferred to a new parent company? Google was the parent company of a bunch of sub-companies, including Google Search. And then for whatever reason, the founders decided to make a brand new company, Alphabet. So now Alphabet is the parent company of Google. 
and YouTube and Gmail and Android and all of that Google stuff, the Google self-driving cars and all of that, Alphabet is the parent company. Uh, the cynic in me tells me there must be some sort of tax shenanigans going on because of that. But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. So anyway, we'll go to google.com. And also, did you notice they changed their logo recently? So now um, it makes all the first graders much happier. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a search here. Um, let's search your own name. Go ahead and type your own name. Search for yourself. Search for yourself in the most in the way that your name is most commonly known. So if you're William Jefferson Clinton, perhaps search for self, yourself for Bill Clinton. Search for yourself in the name that you are most commonly known. We'll do a Google search for yourself. I get 26.8 million results uh, for all the Victor Campuses of the world. A bunch of pictures here, none of these are mine. Then there's Victor Campos, the actor. I was not born in 1935, and I'm not an actor, so that's not me. Uh, there's an internet movie database link. There's a LinkedIn. That's me. My LinkedIn is right there. Top 25 Victor Campuses on LinkedIn. Victor Campos on Facebook. That's not me. There's a couple of Rate My Professor profiles. These are me. You can check out my class ratings. Uh, there's one of my websites, vmcampos.com slash me. There's my website, Brand Yourself. There's a video, Victor Campos, that's not me. And then there's these ads. And then related searches. So this is a typical search engine result page. You might have some ads, you might have some pictures, you might have a call out on the side, suggested searches. Yours might not look the same as mine, that's fine. When you searched for yourself, how many of you found at least one result that is you? Okay. And how many of you found at least one result that you didn't expect? A few people. Okay. So, how does it know about me? The more content you put online, the more you'll be found. Which sounds obvious, but think about it. So if you've got a website, only a website, that's some content that can be found. But if you've got a website, and you're on Yelp, and you're on Twitter, and you're on Facebook, and you're on Quora, and you're on this and that and this and that, you have more content that you're putting out there that could be found. Google found my LinkedIn, my personal website, my Rate My Professor profiles, my Brand Yourself website. So that's like five out of the top ten results. Make a note here brandyourself.com. This is a website that helps you manage your online reputation. Because the search engines are browsing as many websites as they can 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. The search engines are on all the time trying to find things. So it may find things of yours that you don't want it to find. And so if you use one of these reputation management sites, you will then put out your best content to put your best foot forward to make the best impression on the search engines. Brandyourself.com is one such page. It's free for most of the basic services and then of course there's a paid tier that give you more options but this is a way for you to promote the best things about yourself as a person. You do this for people not companies at the moment. They might change it later. But this is like a free uh, business card and it ranks on the top results on page one as well as my other stuff. Question? Oh. Mm. So there could be more than one name of yourself with someone else. There could be more than one of your company. 
So if you're on brand yourself, for example, that could be a way to, to put the, the relevant information of you who are still around. There's other websites that do this also. Um, what's another one? Uh, about me. About.me. That's another website that helps you create an online presence to manage your, your, your reputation and such. And I think there's one even called reputation.com. But a lot of these have some free aspects and some paid aspects. Question? Does location factor when you're searching for a name? Nowadays, more and more, yes, because here it did recognize that I'm in San Diego. So it's going to give me results of San Diego. We'll see how that's good and bad. Because what if I'm a company that I want to sell something anywhere throughout the country or the world? So uh, we'll talk about that, that the search engines and the web browsers are s smarter nowadays that understand your location. Okay, so we did a Google search for your name. Pull up an, a different search engine. I used Firefox. Let's get a different search engine. And now we'll look at the other big, uh, the other big uh, search engine out there, Bing.com. So I'm in a different search engine, and I'm going to go to Bing.com, B-I-N-G.com. How many of you have heard of Bing before this class? How many of you have ever used Bing before this class? How many of you used Bing within the last month? Okay. So you see here it's not as used, popular, as Google, but globally it is increasing. It used to have, you know, 0% market share several years ago, and then it went up to 5 and 10 and 15. It's at about 20%. Last time I checked, they release these statistics every quarter or so. Bing is increasing. If Bing is increasing, Google is decreasing. Now, it'll be quite a while at the current pace if Bing ever takes over, but there's two big search engines, Google and Bing. That's why you want to think about optimizing for both. The good news is that pretty much what we will be doing will apply to both search engines. They each have their own little tweaks to be more optimized for their search engine, which we should engage in. But the reason we're pulling up Bing here is it's a search engine just like Google. It's very different in that um, in that it's much more colorful. It's, it's going to have a big background picture every day, maybe to inspire or whatever, and a bunch of uh, news, uh, news of the day and such. But it's a search engine. So search your name exactly the way you searched it in, in Google. Let's see this results page. So comparing and contrasting, on Google I had 26 million results, in Bing I have only 5 million results. Well both search engines are searching the same global internet, but both search engines feel they will give you the best results. Because if you think about it in terms of companies, the Google search company, the Bing search company, they both have a product and therefore both feel they can give you the best product. Just like McDonald's feels it can give you the best hamburger, whereas Jack in the Box feels it can give you the best hamburger, and they're all wrong because actually five guys will give you the best hamburger. And so here Google and Bing are both saying, here's the best results. And Bing is saying, you only need the, one of these five million results, whereas Google says, you need one of these 26 million results. But it's still about the first page, or maybe the second, or maybe the third. So let's see what I'm seeing here. Top result is the Internet Movie Database for this 80-year-old actor. Another call-out box on the side here, but this one is more detailed than Google's. It actually goes on to a filmography. So, no, I was not in Scarface, and I was not in Juice and the Master Gunfighter. Um, second page of results is LinkedIn, a directory site. Pictures, just like Google, but there's my picture. Uh, my specific LinkedIn. Facebook, that's not me. Um, related, Victor Attorney, nope. Victor Actor, nope. Victor uh, Junior, yes. Victor San Diego, yes. Uh, Facebook, that's not me. Victor Campos Photography, that's not me. So different results. But a couple of them are me that do appear on the first page. 
and my picture shows up. No, actually, I didn't look carefully. That's not me. That's Victor G. Campos. That's not me. But um, you see different results. You might say, okay, well, if, if uh, Bing only has 20% market share, why would I care? I'm going to go with the big boys. I'm going to go with Google, who's been around nearly 20 years now. Um, Bing's been around maybe seven or eight. Uh, why would I care then about such a small market share? Again, small percentage-wise, but in raw numbers, it's hundreds of millions, if not you know, nearly billions of searches. And Bing, we can look up the, the, the stats, Bing is increasing. One of the reasons Bing is increasing is, let me ask you this, what kind of computer do we have in this lab right here? Windows. A PC, a Windows computer. Okay, if you go out and go to any computer shop or Walmart or wherever, and you buy a brand new Windows computer, it comes with Windows, it's going to most likely come with Windows 10, the latest version of Windows. If you bought Windows 8 or Windows 7, right, they have the search engines, they have the, 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 the operating system, Windows, and then they have the search engine built in, Bing. So when you buy a brand new Windows computer, and even though Macs get a lot of attention and a lot of fame, the largest demographic of, of computers in the world are PCs, Windows computers, technically. So Windows computers have then Bing built in instead of Google. People can change the search engine to Google if they want, of course. Not a lot of people perhaps know how to do that. They just get online and search. They don't care. I, I searched. I found what I wanted. But uh, Windows computers by default have Bing. So that's a large demographic there. Um, for a long time, iPhones had a contract with Google to provide results from Google search when you did a search with Siri or Safari or whatever that contract expired and Apple now has gone with partnering with Bing and Yahoo so iPhone 6 is out eventually iPhone 7 Mac OS 10 on your on your laptop they are all gonna have a search engine besides uh, Google so that's increasing their numbers also my friend has a Prius. She's got this cool little touchpad on the center console that shows GPS maps and all of that, and it says search local. And that search local is powered by Bing. So Bing is being used, or at least being becoming available on many more platforms, and that's how it went within a year from you know 15% to 20%. I haven't checked the latest numbers. It's probably a little bit higher, too. 21%, 22 24 who knows? But it's increasing, and Google is decreasing. Google, to some degree, is worried about that now. So they change the algorithm to show you better results. Bing then changes their algorithm to show you better results. They're in a constant arms race to show you the best results. So that's why we would care about Bing, because it is it is ascending, it does have a large market share. Another big search engine is Yahoo. We're not really going to deal much with Yahoo because Yahoo actually gets many of their results from Bing. Bing does the hard work and sends those results to Yahoo. So if we're optimizing for Google and Bing, we're then tangentially also optimizing for Yahoo. So if you're just curious, you can also quick, do a quick Yahoo search for your name. There's my picture again, just like Bing. Internet Movie Database. These are almost the exact same results if I put them side by side. There's the Internet Movie Database. There's that LinkedIn profile, photos. There's This is one difference right here. On Yahoo, I am seeing my LinkedIn as opposed to Victor G. Campos. Rotten Tomatoes. <coughs> oh, there's my Southwestern College profile on Yahoo. So slightly different results, but most of them are 
coming straight from Bing, aren't they? Because they have a partnership. Yes. Uh, I, I usually use um, Firefox and mm -hmm. and I just um, you know sometimes Yahoo just pops up out of nowhere even though I am still in Firefox is a web browser and Yahoo is a search engine. So when you search on any search engine, it's tying, it's tapping into. Uh, when you type a search in a, in a web browser, oftentimes it taps into a search engine. So most likely your Firefox is connected to Yahoo. That's why it's popping up. And as we've seen here, Yahoo is getting a lot of results from Bing. So in a sense, you're also tapping into Bing. Question. I was going to say that Bing actually put me on the first page. Great. The website that I like. Very good. So you see there that it behooves us to try to focus on the two big search engines because uh, we're going to get traffic from, from either place. Yeah, it's going to be harder to rank on Google because it's the bigger search engine most well known. Everyone's trying to optimize for Google, but if we also take into account Bing, we're going to get a lot of results from there too. Yes? So this one site, uh, www.mylife.com, they show my age. And I contacted them and I said, I don't want you to show my age. And they said, oh, we're not doing that. And so we were emailed back and forth and uh, they said that they can't review them. Do you have a suggestion? This is, this is, a, this is such an, an unfortunate thing nowadays. Um, there's so much of our information up online that either we put on purpose or accidentally or, or whatever without our knowledge. There's so much information up here that a lot of us, we value still our privacy and we don't want that stuff online. Unfortunately, because of the US laws and such, and because a lot of these tech companies are based in the US and they have lobbyists and all of that, unfortunately it's very difficult for us as US citizens to get some of these protections. The European Union, they have actually fought the search engines, specifically Google, and they've won. And now in Europe, they have what is basically known as the right to be forgotten. If you're a European citizen, you can request Google, remove my stuff from Google, and Google must do it. I think within 30 days. So um, other parts of the world have that. We don't. So we're trying to get that, but again, lobbyists. And so perhaps eventually we will get that. The, the thing that I can say, I don't think there's much we can do. Perhaps we can complain to, you know, the FCC or the, uh, what's the other one, the Federal Trade, uh, the FTC. We can, com we can complain to those that are supposed to be consumer-oriented organizations. There's also the, con what's that new one, the Consumer Protection Board, C CPB. Perhaps we can complain to them and enough people do it, something happens. Short term, I don't know if much we can do because if that company, if it's their website and they claim they can't do anything about it, time to get the lawyers involved. So uh, and hopefully the U.S. sees what other people, what other nations are doing and lets us do that here as well because I want to be removed. I don't want that thing. But it's complicated because it's, it's technology, it's data that you can copy easily from across the world. And the search engines do have a point that this is difficult to deal with because they have backups of backups of backups. So we'll see how it goes. Yes? So kind of tag, tagging onto that idea in what you're going to teach us with SEO, is there a way for us to say, say all my results right now are like all these random companies that have my public information, that have my age, my birthday, my address, whatever. Hmm. Is there a way through SEO to build your personal brand and then make the top 10 things that come up not that. So mm -hmm. all your age stuff is on page three that nobody's going to look at. So. <laughs> yeah, we might not be able to get rid of it, but yes, definitely through SEO, that is that is one reason why you might want to learn SEO, to, for, to better control yourself, your brand online. So definitely, as we're seeing on these results, 10 results, like five of them are mine. So I'm pushing down perhaps the negative ones. And the, one of the main goals of brandyourself.com is that it will send you alerts when a brand new result of yourself appears and you can go log in and say is this a good result a bad result or is it not me so I've seen it and I've used it for a few years whenever I get an alert and it says is this you or not or bad result and I mark not I do see that it seems to drop down so I don't know if the if brand yourself has some sort of direct connection with the search engine specifically Google 
but I have seen using that does seem to manage your online better, your online persona. Uh, this yes. Is just funny. There are companies though that profile people, and I have a friend who's profiled people that she uh, wants to date on social um, websites, and so she does make use of that, and I think most people can access those. Um, for just a small fee. Profiles, like yeah. to look up people's, uh, you to know. To see if they're divorced, married, mm -hmm. um, if they have a record, a criminal record, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah, this is the thing that there's always been public records. You are always able to go to City Hall or the local realty office or the local jail and look up these public records. They've always been around. But now because of the internet, the ubiquity of it, these are becoming digitized. So all of these things that have always been public are now maybe more obvious, but they've always been public. So yeah, this is a gray area. This is the Wild West. We're living through, honestly, this big change in our society, global society, in that it always was, you wanted to look something up, you have to go down to City Hall and request something and get it on a, a mimeogram copy and all of that, and now you can get it easily, quick search. So I don't have all the answers, but managing yourself online with SEO and such could be a way to really put out the most positive uh, results out there. It also makes it easier for um, hackers to get information on you and create false identification. Yeah, that's the dark side of, of all of this openness, that it does uh, have the ability for people to uh, look at what you posted on Twitter and what you posted on your website and what, they, what was posted on uh, Yelp and such, and then maybe build a profile for you and yeah, uh, do yeah, something. Your mother's maiden name, which is really important for us. Yeah, so this, all of this security really needs to change because uh, for a long time it was, well, we need to have a, a good password. And then, well, that password, I'm using the same password on 10 profiles. If that one profile is compromised with that one password, they might have access to all of my profiles, like my bank. So that's why they're trying to do thumbprint identification the latest thing, Windows 10 has this brand new high-tech feature that if you've got a web camera you can actually look at it and it'll analyze your eyeball and it'll let you log into your into your account. So um, this whole issue of cybersecurity, it's been a long time coming. If you think back how long have you known about computers, how long have you used computers, it's not that long of a time but it's been such a change in, in the world. Computers have really changed the world, human society. But we're lagging behind on some things, privacy, um, security, etc. And so we're seeing this stuff changing and we're having growing pains and we have to maybe have really painful growing pains, but hopefully things get better. Let's uh, do a couple more searches here. Uh, we've searched for uh, yourself, your name. Let's do a comparison search um, on both search engines again. Uh, do you know this trick in Windows? If you drag your your window all the way to the left, it'll snap into place, and therefore you can drag your other window and snap it to the right. You can look at them side by side. That's pretty useful, especially with nice big monitors like you guys have. But anyway, I, I'm going to search again on both search engines. This time, search for your company name don't search for your company name address, so I wouldn't search for Paint Interactive. Search for your company name in the way that it's supposed to be spelled and supposed to be known. So I'm searching for PMD Interactive. That's how it's supposed to be known. That's how it's on our business cards. I'm going to search for both. Look at that, number one. I must be doing something amazing, right? <laughs> This is a trick question, obviously. If someone knows my website, of course it's going to appear number one. But if you just had, if you didn't know me, didn't know this class, and didn't know anything about this, what would you say PMD Interactive does? The name is pretty esoteric. It doesn't quite give you a meaning right away. If this was something like Campus Web Designs, okay, it's very obvious what that's about. This is not quite obvious what my company is about. But here, this exercise is to see what do the search engines know about my website. If you get just one result at the top and, thing, and the rest are not related, this is what I'm saying. S-E-M. What else are you doing outside of your website? 
first result, Google, my website, and it has a date when it was last updated. Teams interact with Facebook, great. Teams interactive on Yelp. Teams interactive on Twitter, on LinkedIn, a couple of our Android apps, on YouTube, on something called alignable.com that I've never heard about until now. And one more thing on Instagram. So 9 out of 10 are results that we have actively created. And Google then says there's another 369,000 results to look at. Now, that's not really accurate, but there's lots of results of the stuff that we put online. Comparing with um, Bing, number one result again is the main company. It doesn't say the last updated date, but look at this. Deep links. These are links that are deeper within the, the website, that they're, that they're further into the site. Google doesn't have that in this case. Question? So it seems to me that when you're doing the searches on the directory, it's coming up, that it's starting to shift over to where what's maybe most important for you is showing up in, like, your Yelp, definitely, and your Yelp is you got it. You got it. You you got you got to our realization early on. If you didn't hear that, it's becoming more and more important to also appear on these listing sites, on these directory sites, on Yelp, for example. You might not have thought about it, but Yelp, <coughs> for just about every business, is important. Maybe you thought about it as only the place that you would go to complain about restaurants. But no, it's also the place where you go and complain about your barber, and your salon, and your school, and your realtor, and um, yeah, your pretty, dog walker. Pretty much, if I'm searching for something, mm -hmm. it's Yelp, and if it's less than a five star, I don't go any farther. Because there are so many five stars, you can change so many, you don't even bother to go down to 14 five or four. So. Like a lot of companies have a sign in their office that says, If you give me a review, I give you a discount. Some people free. So, and then they give the company a good review, it doesn't really mean. Well, I've definitely. I've definitely heard of that, but I think that's very, very low. I haven't seen that very recently. There was a time when that was a big thing. Suddenly, when everyone was becoming aware of Yelp, oh, I need good reviews. Let me give free gifts and such. It does happen still, of course. I, I haven't seen it personally in a while, and I know that's just a sample of one. But uh, because I keep track of all of this stuff as a business, um, that is much less common. And Yelp knows that there are abuses in their system. Yelp knows that there are spam bots that make fake five-star reviews. Yelp, because they are also a publicly traded company, which means they have shareholders to, to appease, they are trying as much as possible to weed out the spam bots, the, the results of someone that never had a Yelp account but just created one right now to give you a good review, they weed those out. They don't count them in the reviews anymore. So Yelp is getting better about showing real results. <laughs> Things are still going to fall through the cracks. But um, people also themselves can rate the comments. People can rate that as a good comment. So also the, the people themselves are kind of policing themselves a little bit. Yelp is policing it. The algorithm is policing it. So I, I think it's less of an issue. I don't think it's completely solved because this is a messy business, but uh, I, I, you, I think tr Yelp reviews definitely are more trustworthy than they used to be. And if a company is using that tactic, someone is going to write on a Yelp review, they're asking for positive reviews, and then blow the cover and then start to hurt them on Yelp. Yes? I have a question about these um, ones that tell you, like I sometimes do research on something and I find a site that says the 10 best Blah blah, mm -hmm. and then you go there and you wonder: Are they being set up by a company that's a competitor for all kinds of other a, a group of companies, and they set themselves up as number one on that site? That's that's a good question. I, I don't quite have an answer for it because if this is if I can anyone can make any website, 
and therefore anyone can make any post that says the top 10 restaurants, the top 10 travel destinations, the top 10 dog walkers. So that one blog post of top 10 dog walkers is not enough to really make a dent on the search engines. If consistently this particular dog walker is appearing on many top 10 lists and on Yelp and many directories, then the search engines will see that and rank that dog walker higher than the rest. But just one very congratulatory blog post, even five, might not be really enough to affect the results. So these deep links are very useful because um, you, you want to see, well, what are the services this company offers? You don't see that on Google until you actually click. Uh, what kind of design, what graphic design do they engage in, and so forth. So that's a difference right there in Bing that we can, that we can talk about when we get to it. Yes? How do you think that all those deep links come up? The short ants. It's, it's the content of the website submitting a sitemap. It's things that we will talk about. The short answer, though, is we, we can't exactly turn this on. Both search engines will tell you, because Google does have a version of that. It just didn't show it. The search engines will tell you when we set them up that they will activate some features. You, you cannot request some features. They will do it. So for whatever reason, Bing said, yeah, your site is set up enough that it does require to show off these deep links. Because the person, Victor, is very much tied with that company, they wanted to show that link. Twitter result. So there's a Twitter result also on, on Google. But notice this one has how many followers, how many tweets, and so forth. So a little more stats. There's the Yelp profile again. They, they show it in a slightly different way. Look at how those, those stars pop out. Look at that beautiful 5 out of 5 right there. So, um, different, slightly different results. There's the uh, different order also. Um, Facebook is lower than Yelp on Bing. Um, they switched two places. Um, there's something that's not on, on uh, Google. Uh, how many of you heard of a site called Vimeo? Vimeo is a competitor, basically, to YouTube. It's a video site. Well, Google... It shouldn't be that shocking, and it's been verified, even though they always denied it. It's not that shocking that Google favors showing Google results. If you're on YouTube, Google+, Plus, uh, whatever, whatever other Google services, Google Maps, guess what? Google favors showing that, even though they've always said they don't. They've done extensive testing. Third parties have tested this. They've uh, basically been called on it several times, and recent articles are showing, yeah, it seems to be that even though Google says no, a lot of the results have a precedence of Google properties. Well, uh, Bing um, is a competitor to Google, so they can show the results however they want, however they feel is the best result. And in this case, it's showing a Vimeo result instead of a YouTube result. Question? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I just thought with you, please, along with what you were just saying, I when I ch ch checked myself in Google, it didn't show my Google Plus account, and, but in Yahoo, it did show it. Mm -hmm. It was just interesting that Google wouldn't put that in. Uh, Are you very active on Google Plus? Not, oh, I've got stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that's not good enough enough anymore for the search engine. Just to have a profile, you also have to have it active. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why Google didn't rank it very well, because you might not have used it recently. Okay. The, the point of many of these results pages are they're trying to show you the best results, the most accurate and active results. That's why they give you slightly different results. So furthermore, on Bing, uh, there's our LinkedIn again. There's our Google+. Plus. That's funny. I'm not saying that, they're nev that Bing is never going to show you Google results and that Google is only going to show you Google results. I'm just saying there's a lot of factors. And so we did do an update recently on, on Google+, Plus. so Bing saw it and they ranked it. And then the, uh, the WordPress.com, which I think that one's funny because we haven't really put anything on that in a while. But uh, yet another online presence, and then it showed in the top results. We'll do one more search and then we'll take a break. Um, here, obviously, a person needs to know your company to search your company, but if they didn't know that they needed PMD Interactive, and actually what they needed it are 
Now let's do a, a, a search here for what your company does. Don't get too specific about location and such. Just think about one or two keywords. What does your company do? If I'm a realtor, just a realty. I know that's not the best result, but we're doing this on purpose. I'm going to search for web marketers. Fight the temptation to search web marketers in San Diego. Don't get too specific yet. I'll explain why a little later. Just search web marketers or whatever web marketing. Search for whatever your your company does. Ads, of course. Google makes it very obvious. Being not as obvious, unfortunately. But these are obviously marked as ads, so I would uh, discount them. Cukeragency.com is number one, but it's an ad, so it might not be the best agency. In Google, I get then a map with a bunch of dots. There seem to be a lot of web marketers in downtown San Diego. Um, cool little map and call out and you know spotlight, let's say. And then I get web, webmarketingtoday.com, articles, tips, and advice on e-commerce, digital marketing, a Wikipedia article, the webmarketingassociation.org, what is web marketing from webopedia.com, internetmarketinginc.com. I searched web marketing, but it also gave me a result of internet marketing. And then internetmarketingninjas.com. Pictures. A how-to article. So in the old days, a search engine result page would show you a list of 10 companies that were about web marketing. In the modern search engine results page, you might get a smattering, two or three, of real companies mixed in with blog posts, definitions, how-to articles, directories, Yelp listings, listings on Kudzu, on TripAdvisor, on all of these directory sites. Recommendations as well. Web marketing strategies, web marketing salary. And it gave me uh, about 387 million results. Bing. Some more ads. The number one ad is marketing360.com. After that, webmarketingtoday.com, which is also the top organic result. These are the pay per click results, these are the organic results. So the organic result with a didn't necessarily pay for anything, is number one on Google and number one on Bing. But because the, in, the results are kind of cluttered, you might not really see them as number one. Remember, they used to have numbers. Where do those numbers go? Search engines change things all the time. I also get the same Wikipedia article, and then the web marketing checklist, 37 ways to promote. So a great, useful article. Ignite online marketing at web.com. Internet Marketing Ninjas, they appeared a little higher. Related Marketing. What is Internet Marketing? Again, at Webopedia. WordStream. So very similar results because both search engines are trying to give you the best results from when you search something. One result that does not appear on Google is Orange County Website Design. OCWebMarketingSolutions.com. And then more ads. Who is Groupon supposed to? Is that a marketing uh, company? Um, Groupon is a place uh, for you to buy coupons. Uh, you pay, let's say, ten dollars to buy twenty dollars worth of spa treatments. So it's a place for buying um, promotions and such. Stay away from Groupon. Groupon is very good for consumers, uh, but <laughs> I have had other businesses tell me that, so that's a larger discussion for later. But for consumers, it's great. Um, so here we did a search where a few years ago you might have had a shot appearing on this top results for such a generic search term. because. The web, if you didn't know, has been around 25 years. 
the internet has been around since around 1969. So the internet has been around longer. The web, which is what we're using right here in a web browser, the web, the World Wide Web websites, have been around 25 years. And eventually, you know, there were only a couple dozen websites, and then a couple hundred, and then a couple thousand, then eventually search engines came out. Yahoo was one of the biggest search engines, one of the earliest search engines, when the web was very small. And it was trying to put together a directory of useful websites. A couple college students in their dorm wanted to put together a list of, of, uh, of, of websites that were useful. Eventually it became the big search engine Yahoo, eventually Google came out, they claimed to do it better, they took over, then Bing came out, and others, and so forth. So in the beginning, the search engines were pretty dumb, uh, because there weren't that many websites to deal with. They had to rely on things like, what does the website tell us about itself to rank them? In the old days, it was all about developing your keywords, my company is about web marketing. So I'm going to use that keyword as many places as I can throughout my site. This is the old way. I would put, I would, I would go by webmarketing.com. If that was taken, I would go find webmarketing.net. If that was taken, webmarketing.org. I would try to get that keyword in my address. Then I would put the term web marketing up on the title of the page, in the footer, in every article several times. That's how the search engines knew, okay, this website seems to be about web marketing, because it keeps saying it over and over. Well, that worked for people for a long time, but then it worked for spammers, because spammers aren't honest people. Spammers aren't trying to do things legitimately. Spammers want you to click on their link and buy their product. They don't care about anything else. They don't care about customer service or returns and all of that. So spammers would take the whole dictionary and add it to their website because then they would hit every keyword that anyone could possibly be searching for. They would do these dirty, these dirty tricks in that they would take that keyword and they would put it on the site visibly and then they would take that keyword and write it in white text on a white background, invisible. I wouldn't see it but the search engines would see, they've mentioned mar web marketing 40 times. They must be about web marketing. They must be the best web marketing company because they mention it 47 times. Well, the search engines get smarter. The algorithm, the technique changes. And therefore, the old technique of keyword stuffing now is death. If the search engines see that you're abusing your keywords, that it's in your address, and that it's in your title, and that it's in almost every paragraph, and that it's in your footer, and that it's artificially way too many places, they say, that must be a spammer, even though you're not. Nowadays, because of so much web search engine abuse, the search engines really are more about guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. They're going to penalize you first, and then you're going to need to climb out of this hole, which can be hard of negative SEO. If you follow these old techniques that the spammers have used, that the spammers have abused, you're going to have an uphill battle to get up on these top results. And you may have been trying to do it legitimately, but you just got caught in the dragnet of guilty until proven innocent. So we'll talk about how to try to get out of that hole. We'll, try, we'll talk about how to build a good foundation so that we never fall in the hole. But this search that we're doing here, just as an exercise, it's not about basic keywords on our site anymore. It's about the long tail keywords, which we'll talk about. Question? They're not, uh, they don't use metadata anymore in, in websites. I don't have to put metadata on my website. And it, must, it must be the same thing. Yeah, a lot of these techniques that used to work might not work as much anymore or might be detrimental. And uh, when I give out my handout and such, it'll kind of explain what's good and not so good anymore, and we'll actually do it. Um, so we'll go into the details of what's good and not anymore. But really, it really comes down nowadays. Content. What are you adding to your site? Are you blogging? Are you on social media? Are you on Yelp? What's your content? Not what trick are you using that then falls out of favor when it gets abused. But what's the content? The content of the character of your website.
So I want to eventually rank for the more specific. Nowadays, you probably don't search for web marketing. You search for restaurant, web marketing, or web marketers in San Diego, or let's say Chula Vista. No, actually, affordable restaurant web marketers in Chula Vista. Do you find yourself doing these kinds of searches more? That you are being more specific? After the break, this is what we're going to be concerned more about, the long tail keywords, much more specific, because the, um, the way we're searching nowadays, maybe after, maybe you don't have 25 ex years of experience on the web, very few of us do, maybe you've got 10, ex 10 years of experience using the web. Think back, when was the first website you saw? 2004, 2001, 1998? You've probably been using the web a while, and as you use it more, you get more savvy with it. And now you're, either someone told you or you figured it out, it seems to give me better results if I'm more specific. So also, let's see if it works, because I always have terrible reception. Nowadays we might have one of these fancy smartphones where we can say, what's a good Italian restaurant nearby? So now we're doing something like this more often. You can do this on iPhone, Android, Windows Phone. And I got here, Ristorante Caz. It's 0 0.62 miles away. It's got four, and a, four out of five reviews on Yelp with 101 reviews. Godfather. Um, it's got four stars out of 482. Maggie's Cafe. Four and a half stars out of 173 reviews. So that's how I'm searching. I ask my phone, it gives me results. These results, because I'm on a Windows Phone, are coming from Bing. If you're on an iPhone and you ask Siri, um, it's going to give you Bing results also. If you're on an Android phone, it's going to search Google and it's going to give you those results. But I asked in a natural way. If you've never done it before, try it. These things are getting pretty smart. They're tying into the search engines, which are also getting pretty smart. Because after 25 years, the old techniques don't work anymore. We have to talk about the more detailed techniques, the long tail keywords, SEO and SEM because this pulled up results from Yelp. It went through Bing into Yelp, gave me results. If I'm not on Yelp, if, I'm not, if I don't have good reviews on Yelp, I might not have been found, even though I'm a block away. Again, location. It knows my location. These things know my location. So, a lot to think about, and we'll get to it right after the break. It's 11.15, we'll be back 11.25 and then we'll get more in-depth.